Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel and happy Juneteenth. If you don't already know what Juneteenth is, it's the celebration of the emancipation or the end of slavery in America. And to mark this beautiful day, I am partnering with the Kauai community to do a question and answer about my experiences as a Black Lolita. So sit back, relax, let's get to pouring some tea. So today we are drinking from Tea Bloom Timeless Moments and today's tea is green tea with rose flower. It's called My Growing Love. My goodness. So let me get you set up and then we'll get into it. So as I've said before in a lot of my videos, I've been a Lolita for six years and the majority of my experiences have all been positive, but there have been some times where, you know, I've just been, you know, not having it. Here you go, love. All right, so let's look up the first question. I have them all on my computer here. So the first one is, what has been the reaction from family and friends? Has it been negative, positive, extreme, or neutral? Well, so for me, this is a pretty like mixed up question. My friends that I had at the time were all into alternative fashion. So it was pretty like seamless with them to transition into Lolita. And a lot of my friends are Lolitas now. My family, was a little bit different. I grew up in a very like oppressive, I'll say religious environment to where they put a very huge emphasis on modesty and not modesty in the way that Lolita is a modest fashion because we're not showing all of our goods, but more modesty in the fact that you blend into the background and you don't stand out at all. So that one was a bit of a challenge for me. <laughs> my father has always been supportive of everything that i did so he was very he was pretty chill with it like he didn't really care my mother on the other hand absolutely hated it she gave me a lot of negative feedback i got a lot of like the majority of the bullying that i got for lolita when i first started came kind of from my mom she's become over the past six years more comfortable with it um I think she was mostly just like trying to gauge her reaction from how people around her felt and the people around her were not very accepting of it like I had a lot of people who were like calling me a devil worshiper I had people like saying that I was a prostitute or something like that I had people saying that I was trying to look like a little girl because when I first started I was a sweet Lolita and I think we all get that at some point and it's just like it was very very hard for me to develop confidence in that type of environment to really expand my abilities, <laughs> I'll say, in Lolita. So I'll say that my reaction was a mix of negative and positive. All right, let's look at the next question. By the way, I hope you like your tea. I put just a little bit of honey in it and it really complements that rose really well. All right, so our next question is, what is something you think affects Black Lolitas differently than non-Black Lolitas? This one, I definitely talked a little bit about, just like in a satirical way, in my Things People Say to Black Lolitas video. A lot of Black Lolitas get what I'm just going to say is the Black people don't do that type of thing. So when I first started to go out in Black and Lolita as a Black person, like, people did not know what to think. Like I went out in groups of friends who were Lolitas, but they were predominantly like white Lolitas or Asian Lolitas. And people just looked at me as like the polka dot in the group and like the thing that didn't belong. So I feel that just being a black Lolita, you stand out a lot more. Like people will expect um, odd type of things from other people, but seeing it from you and you know, people think that it's not really a part of your culture and it's not something that you can do. I've had a lot of people to say that I'm trying to be white or I'm trying to be Asian and I feel like that sort of thing would not happen if I were not a Black Lolita. Yeah. The thing that I've dealt with as a Black Lolita is just people saying that like me trying to emulate like a Victorian style fashion that is just not historically accurate. Like I have literally had people come up to me or like online say to me that I am not correct purely because a black person would not have these, this type of wardrobe, you know, if they wore Victorian, they wouldn't have access to 
nice clothes and things like that and that I just I look in historically incorrect like they're like you would be better if you wore like more classical because it looks more like slave clothing and I, I swear to god I swear to god this was an actual conversation and it's like if I were not a black Lolita that stuff would not happen like I have never seen heard or experienced one of my white or Asian Lolita friends being called historically inaccurate even if they say they're representing a Victorian fashion but their dress has like unicorns and crap on it like they don't get that kind of negative pushback so I feel like that's definitely something that is only happening to black and brown Lolitas all right let's see what else we got going on here okay have you ever experienced racism while wearing Lolita and do you think it was any worse because you stood out more. Honey. So I could tell a million stories about this topic, but I'm gonna focus on one particular thing because it really, really disturbed me and it still disturbed me to this day. So there was this person, I'm not gonna name their name. As I described them more, you'll probably figure out who it is because they have been like negative to a lot of black and brown Lolitas, but this person when I met them years ago, probably like five years ago, like around the first when I first started in the fashion, they were pretty, they weren't like mean to me or anything. They didn't say anything, you know, mean to me because we hung out in the same group of friends. So it was she, I, another person who was Caucasian, another person who is Asian. So we hung out in the same little group and I didn't have experiences that were negative with this person for a very long time. Granted, I saw them in extremely small doses. So I saw them for a second at a con here, a second at a tea party there, at an event here. And they were like, everything was chill. I could tell that something was a little off about her because um, like the way that she, like her home situation, she was like very under her parents' thumb and she didn't know a lot about like the general world, which was odd considering her age. So she would make little comments every now and again, but it was purely, I think, out of ignorance because after I shared with her some information, she never mentioned it again and she apologized. But like, there was a time, it was about a year or so ago, where I had an experience with this person that completely, it made me so angry that I just had to cut them off and never speak to them again, even if it meant that I could not hang out in that group of friends anymore. So we were all staying at a friend's house out of state. I had gone for like a weekend and they were there as well. And I don't know if it's because I hadn't seen them in so long and they don't really have any other black or brown friends that they just let the freaking floodgates open up with ignorance. So they were making like a lot of like black jokes that were making me uncomfortable and I was telling her you know that that's unacceptable it's making me very uncomfortable I was stuck at the place for an entire weekend so I couldn't really like get away f with them so I was telling them you know telling her that you know she had to cut it out it wasn't okay like we're not friends like that don't make those kind of jokes about me you know so she kind of curtailed it a little bit as the weekend you know progressed but then I was showing my group of friends some pictures of me and my best friend and my best friend is a Muslim Lolita and she made a comment about her wearing pants under her dresses and how like it ruins her coordinate and her not wearing the right shoe like she was just like dogging my friend out and I got so pissed off at her that I really just had to like let her know about herself because that was completely not okay. And she tried to make up for it. She tried to apologize for it and all that stuff. I got through the weekend without punching her in the face, which was, I feel very proud of myself for that. But then when I got home and I started to think more about the things that she said, and then I found out some other things that she had been saying online that I was completely unaware of. Like she was saying that she doesn't like black Lolitas, but she said that they're not her cup of tea that she doesn't like black lolitas and like when I confronted her about it she was like well you're not black black and I don't know what that means because 
I look black black to me I don't know what it means that I'm not black black but she was like well you're not black black your skin's not that dark and you look like you don't look like the other black lolitas so I'm fine with you but it's just a personal preference and I'm like that's not a personal preference I was like racist this is racist so <laughs> I had to tell her that I could no longer be friends with her I was like this is completely ridiculous and she did not understand why I was so upset like she genuinely did not understand what she did to offend me which was insane and I was explaining to her that just like the idea that black lolitas can't be lolitas makes me not able to be your friend because I am a black lolita and just like other things she said about other lolitas like plus size lolitas she's ragged on them and like lolitas that want to wear their natural hair and don't wear wigs or you know just like nobody's a perfect lolita except for her which was kind of her mental idea so I cut her off I blocked her on all my social media as I told her not to contact me again and she started like po trying to post pictures of me after all this stuff blew up about her being racist not that I said anything it just came out on its own she started posting pictures of me and all this stuff and saying that we were friends and like you kind of used me as her token black friend which was completely insane and I had to message her again so I had to unblock her so I could message her again and we had another conversation and this conversation got kind of not out of hand but I guess she no longer had any to give so she just started being like I don't understand how you can be confident as a black lolita how can you be confident as a plus size lolita like how is it possible that you are able to do this this that and the third like that should not be possible and like I can't I can't with her I can't with her <laughs> So all in all, me and that person are no longer friends. I no longer speak to them. I blocked them on all social media. I don't want to be reminded of them. I don't have any pictures with them anymore. I asked them never to post a picture of me again. And that's the end of that. Any other experiences that I've had have always been like a little subtle types of racism. Like I've been called the N-word and Lolita. I've been called, you know, all types of everything. I told you guys I've been called a cultural appropriator I've been called like a slave I've been called all kind of everything not really by other lolitas just by like randos out on the street or when I go to like a historical house or something like that but whatever whatever the only other things that stick out to me are like traveling with my non-black friends like even something as simple as putting your bags into the back of an uber like even if I'm dressed in full lolita the uber driver puts their bags my non-black friends bags in the back of the car and tells me to lift my bag up and put it in myself even though my bag is like smaller than theirs or lighter than theirs or you know they greet everybody else when they when we walk into a building but they don't greet me just like very subtle things like that that if you're not aware you won't even pick up on it but as I've said before the majority of my experiences have all been positive so I'm not tripping too hard off of that so let's go to the next question it says how do you deal with the belief that black people shouldn't wear sweet lolita or more pastel colors i.e black people can't wear bright colors or certain colors don't look well with dark skin so my beliefs about black people when it comes to wearing pastels, I feel that everything is all in what looks good on you, just like with any other person in any other color. Here you go, sweet. But when it comes to dark skin and pastels, I think that that contrast is absolutely beautiful. Like, I love seeing Black Lolitas wear super duper bright pinks and lavenders and yellows and blues because the contrast especially if you have very dark skin it looks 
incredible. I will insert some pictures of some Black Lolitas that I think are just like killing it when it comes to pastels. I myself, as you can probably tell, am obsessed with pastel pink. My entire apartment is pastel pink. A lot of my wardrobe is pastel colors. I love to wear bright colors. That girl that I mentioned before, we she did make a little comment before to me about like wearing really bright colors with dark skin like she felt like it looked unnatural you know i've had other people that say that bright colors on dark skin it just like doesn't match and that bright colors look a lot better when your skin is like paper white or very very light because it blends more but i live for a contrast I love it. I love pastels on black skin. When it comes to picking colors for your wardrobe in general, I think that it's all about picking colors that look good on you. So if you are a dark skin Lolita who looks very good in pastel pink but not pastel green, just don't wear pastel green. Wear the colors that are more becoming on you. And same if you are a non-black Lolita. If you have like really yellow undertones and you want to wear a bright yellow dress you're going to look like a sunflower and that might not be as flattering on you as it would be on somebody who has more pink undertones so it's all about picking what looks good on you and you got to be racist about it just pick what looks cute on you keep it cute okay so next question is if i want to join a predominantly black Lolita community where could i find one so this is something that when I first started out, I struggled a lot with because I was not well versed in Facebook or Instagram or any kind of internet, anything. So my advice to you would be to go on Facebook and look up literally like Black Lolita community. I'll actually post in the description some Facebook groups that I belong to. I belong to a Black Lolita community, Black Fashionista Society, Black Lolitas of YouTube, and I'm telling you, like, the level of support that I get from these people has helped my confidence to grow as a Lolita, like, astronomically. I would not be the person that I am today without these communities. One community in particular, DC Kawaii Style, was the very first Lolita community that I ever belonged to. The owner is a very dear friend of mine, and she's kind of like, like a Lolita mom, I would say. She is so protective and she's so supportive and she really genuinely wants to help everybody be the best person that they can be, especially if you are like a Black Lolita. So definitely, even if you don't live in a, like a DMV area, you should definitely look into joining some groups so that you can get that community of support to help you to grow. And message me on Instagram. It's not like very widely known, but I am a Lolita mentor. So I am very DM friendly on Instagram and it's like I will answer any question that you have. I answer questions all day long. So if you are looking to get started in the community, send me a message on Instagram and I can help you to find like brands that'll be suitable for you, styles that you would like. We can talk about like color matching or just anything you want to talk about. I want to be the person that I needed when I joined the community and I want to be that person for you. So send me a message. Alrighty, so we have gotten down to the very last question. And that question is, what advice would you give to someone who was nervous about wearing Lolita due to their race? This one's going to take a while. So the very first thing that I want to say is there is a place for you in this community. There is a dress for you that will fit you. There's a dress for you that's going to look incredible on you. There are people here to support you. You have a place here and you will be appreciated and loved and respected if you join this community. Do not be afraid of the saltiness that you hear about Lolitas. Do not be afraid of the racism. There are people here that will support you and that will guide you through it and that will be your friends. So do not worry. Come on in. The frills are great. So if your reluctance is based in the idea that like black or brown or whoever people can't wear this fashion, I would say to like literally look up Kawaii Melanin Girls or like Kawaii Alternative Fashion on Facebook and Instagram and you will literally like be flooded 
with examples of melanin girls wearing these kawaii fashions and absolutely just like stealing your breath away by how good they look. You can use them as inspiration. You can like DM them and ask them for advice, like, or you can just have the proof that this fashion really is for everybody. I cannot stress enough that Lolita is literally just clothes. It's just a dress. It's not that deep. You know, I am the same person that I am in Lolita as I am in, an, I don't wear pants or t-shirts, so I guess like a non-Lolita dress, like a regular old dress. I am the same person. You know, I wake up with the same face, the same attitude, the same voice, the same mind, you know, as as I am Lolita, non-Lolita. It's just, it's just an outfit. It's not that deep. So if you feel like you can't wear it because you're not Asian or you're not white, honey, it's not, it's not that deep. You can do it and you're going to look freaking beautiful. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you can do it. You can do it. You can. I believe in you and I will be here to coach you through it if you need me. Like, do not let the haters get to you that's all they are it's just haters and it's just words and it really means nothing a lot of people have negative things to say purely out of jealousy or their own ignorance so just brush it to the side brew a cup of tea with their tears keep it moving and keep it cute thank you guys so so much for watching this video and thank you for over a thousand subscribers i was so surprised that we got so far so fast with this channel and i am so excited to see where it goes and I am also a female of my word, so we are gonna be doing a thousand subscriber giveaway. So for this giveaway, I am giving away one of these floofity boofity star clips. I've got a pink, a purple, a blue, a silver, and a gold. So all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, of course, comment down below which color you would like. I will announce the winner on my social media sometime next week, probably on Thursday, so keep a lookout for that. I hope you enjoyed this new Tea Time segment. Let me know what you guys want to talk about next Tea Time. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that cha-cha-cha, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye!